Hello, everyone, and welcome to another awesome live video in my Facebook group, The Portrait Photographer's Resource. So for those of you who are new here, and there are quite a few of you, um, because I saw that a lot of new people joined this week, uh, this is a Facebook group I have basically on uh, dedicated to mentoring and educating professional portrait photographers all over the world. So if you are new, welcome. My name is Sean, and I am a professional wedding photographer. Um, so the main reason I wanted to do this video um, is for a couple of reasons. One, we are in the middle of editing season. I don't know about you guys, but for me, September and October are the two busiest months out of the year. Um, between those two months, I shot probably, probably like I think 22 weddings. Uh, yeah, so as you can imagine, I am doing a lot of editing right now, and I actually do all of my own editing in-house. So I wanted to create this video to kind of show you all, now that we are in editing season, uh, how I do it. Because I get a lot of questions all the time from people asking me, Sean, how do you, you know, when with 50 weddings a year, how do you do everything in-house and not go insane? So um, I am going to go over exactly that in this video. So I'm going to check my monitor here to my right and uh, see how many people have joined us. Looks like we got a healthy amount so far. Uh, if you are here joining us live, uh, please feel free to drop a comment into, uh, or into the comment section here. And feel free to ask questions throughout this video as well. That way, um, if, if you do have a question, I can go ahead and answer it live for you in real time. So... Uh, without further ado, let's kind of jump into this. So as I mentioned, I have been shooting weddings uh, for a long time. I've been doing it uh, for 12 years now. Uh, 2022 is 12 years for me. And I shoot on average about 50 weddings a year. I think this year I did about a little over 50. Yeah, I think I did 55. Last year I did 75, believe it or not, just because of all the COVID reschedules. It was insane. And I edit every single wedding in-house. Um, it sucks, admittedly, but I'm such a control freak that I, I like things done, you know, a certain way. And before you, you know, you ask, well, Sean, with 75 weddings a year, 50 weddings a year, however many you're doing, you're, you're probably making okay money and you can easily afford to outsource. Absolutely, I could. And I have tried it. Uh, I tried to outsource uh, some of my weddings and be, the, the amount of time I was spending culling the images and then sending them to the the process of sending them to the editor and then reviewing them was only saving me like maybe 45 minutes to an hour's worth of work. Um, and I have a process that makes my editing really smooth and go very quickly. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you tonight. So I'm gonna be showing you my entire process uh, from start to finish on how I edit a wedding. So um, let's go ahead and jump in. So first, uh, the first step is to get the picture right straight off the camera. So I'm actually gonna pull a uh, Lightroom up here. Let me just move it to a different monitor real fast. Okay, and then let me actually just make this full size real fast. Okay, so step one is to get the picture as perfect off the camera as possible. And, and this is really important. Uh, all these steps, I have a four step process. All of these steps are very important, but um, this one especially, and, and the reason being is I feel like there are too many photographers that you know have the mentality of, oh, I'm going to shoot now and fix it later. And if you do that, you're going to be really unsuccessful and you're going to be pulling out your hair and you're going to be spending a lot of time in Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One or whatever your, you know, your editing program of choice is. And um, it's just going to drive you nuts. And I know for a fact that there are a lot of photographers not getting the photos as best off the camera as possible because I do work with a lot of seconds. Um, and a lot of seconds I see their photos and I'm looking at them and I'm like, shit, like this is going to take me forever to edit. And, you know, n nothing, not bashing any of the second photographers that have worked to me because they're all fantastic. They just have a different shooting style than me. So when I am editing a wedding where I do have a second shooter, 
it, it does take longer. So my point is try to get the picture as perfect off the camera as you can. That way, when you bring them into Lightroom and you start editing, you are going to um, have a much quicker time, uh, you know, and you're not going to be sitting at your desk as long. Uh, what couple things, uh, if you're shooting a DSLR, you know, that means looking at your light meter, uh, really adjusting your white balance to make sure that when you do take the photo, your white balance is good. So you're not doing this, you know, you're lessening the amount of color corrections you have to make in post. Uh, I switched to mirrorless a few years back and that has significantly helped my editing time because I can get a live preview in the electronic viewfinder of what my photo is going to look like. Uh, so again, I am getting the picture as close to perfect as I can. And, um, I can just spend less time editing and more time doing the fun things I like to do in life. So, um, moving on to step two now, and that is to optimize Lightroom. So assuming you just shot a wedding, now you've, you've imported them into Lightroom, and now what we're gonna do is optimize Lightroom to run as efficiently as possible. So here are a couple tricks I think you guys are really going to enjoy, some tricks you may not have even known about. Um, I actually discovered just a few, uh, I discovered a couple of these just this year and it's immensely helped. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I switched over to a Nikon Z9 and the files are massive. They are absolutely huge, just, just incredibly big. And it was kind of, um, a little bit, almost like a, a sticker shock for me, you know, or not necessarily a sticker shock, just, just a shock of how much it was slowing down Lightroom for me. So I really had to figure out some ways to optimize it. So um, I'm going to show you guys some tricks right now on ways you can speed up Lightroom. Um, I'm editing currently on a 2019 i9 iMac, but I've also, I also regularly edit too when I'm traveling on my 2014 uh, MacBook Pro. And these, even with the Z9 files, I'm still able to edit really quickly, which is awesome. So uh, first thing, you're going to want to go, and I hope you, yep, you can all see my screen here. Uh, one thing you're going to want to do is uh, first go to your Lightroom preferences. So um, you're going to hit the Lightroom. If you're on a Mac, you're going to hit the Lightroom Classic icon right here. You're going to go to preferences. Couple things. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you go to the performance tab right here on the top. Couple things here. Uh, under camera raw, where it says use graphics processor, you want to go ahead and put that to auto. Sometimes by default, it'll be on off always set that to auto. Um, I'm not 100% sure what this does. I do know, however, that it will um, access your graphics card uh, to help boost it or aid in the processing of Lightroom if it slows down. Uh, the next thing you want to do in the same tab is right below it. There are some camera raw cache settings. Um, so uh, as you can see right here, uh, I think the default value is set to five. I'm not, again, this is another one. I'm not hundred percent sure what this does, but I did see in a video somewhere that, uh, you want to basically have this set to 20 gigabytes or above. Um, so I have it at 40, but as long as it's above 20, from what I understand, you're good. So, uh, in that preferences tab, you want to make sure that you adjust those two settings. So next, um, what we're going to go ahead and do is close this box and you're gonna, we wanna optimize our catalog. So some, this isn't uh, necessary to do all the time, but sometimes if your Lightroom is running really slow, what you can actually do is go to your top of your screen again, go to file and hit optimize catalog right here. It's just a couple items down. Uh, I'm not gonna do this right now because I optimized it recently, um, but it'll give you a little prompt here and you can click optimize and it'll optimize, works its magic. Not really sure what it does, but um, as you can see right here, this will help uh, make Lightroom run a little bit faster. So uh, moving on to uh, these next two items are probably the biggest. Um, these were the biggest like mind blown moments for me that really helped speed up my editing. Um, so the first thing is you're gonna wanna go to catalog settings. Um, so you're gonna hit the Lightroom Classic item again and hit catalog settings. This is gonna bring you to a file handling tab. Now by default, usually it'll be on auto where your standard preview size is. Um, one thing I learned is if you go to like one of the smallest values here, so in this case, I'm just gonna use 1024. 
um, preview quality medium. This essentially makes the preview size of the images a little bit smaller, so you can go through them really quickly. This helps immensely, and I haven't really, when I'm editing, I haven't seen any noticeable loss of, um, of like image quality or image size, uh, even at this lowest value here. So in my opinion, like um, maybe I'm missing something, but for me at this lowest size, my going through the folders or going through the photos way quicker. Um, so make sure you have that selected. Uh, that's probably the big, that's probably where you're gonna see the biggest noticeable change in your Lightroom speed. Um, and then finally, one thing you wanna do is you're gonna select all of your images um, and you wanna build what's called one-to-one -one previews. And what these are, and if I'm explaining this incorrectly, someone uh, please correct me. But um, the way I understand is when you build what's called one-to-one -one previews on your on your images, it essentially creates a um, like a preview of like a JPEG preview of your raw file, so they load a little bit faster in Lightroom. Uh, the image quality will uh, might go down just a little bit. Um, but that's not effect, but it's just the preview uh, is what you're seeing. It's not the actual image itself. So to do this, you want to select all the photos and you're going to go to file. Uh, oh, no, excuse me. You're going to go to library, scroll down to where it says previews right here, and then hit build one to one previews. Uh, now, one thing that I need to warn you about is this does take a very long time for my computer. Um, it, it takes a few hours. So what I'll do is if I know like the night before that the next day I'm going to be editing a, a wedding, uh, I'm, I'll just build these one-to-one -one previews, let it run overnight, and then in the morning they're good to go so I can start editing. So I've already done it for this catalog, uh, so I'm or for this uh, gallery, I should say, so I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, after you do that, though, and after you're done, make sure you hit all the, uh, the, uh, the uh, photos again, right-click, um, or actually, no, you don't even need to right click. I think you just have to go back to library previews and then hit discard one to one previews because it does create uh, quite a, a big amount of it uses up a lot of space on, on your, your hard drive. So you want to make sure you discard those one to one previews once you're done. So um, next step, once you've done all that, you know, once you've optimized Lightroom, is to use what I call, or not what I call, they are called, <laughs> uh, import presets, okay? So what import presets do is when you are, when you import all of your photos into Lightroom, right? You can tell Lightroom to automatically apply certain settings to your images. So when you start editing them, they've already, uh, whatever you decide, whatever values that you, you typically put on your photos are already applied. So for me, um, one thing I was noticing when I was editing my photos is before I, I used this feature, I was making a lot of the same global edits to every single photo and it was taking up a lot of my time. Um, so one thing I discovered is like, or I did some research and I discovered that a lot of photographers are using import presets. So what I mean by that, and let me show you right here, we're gonna go to, um, we're gonna go to develop, okay? So let me uh, go to develop tab and we're just gonna pick a random photo. So we're gonna pick this one that's already selected. Um, now, this is what it looks like straight off the camera, okay? And then when I import my photos into Lightroom, they automatically, the import preset that I've made gets applied and then it'll look like that. Okay, so I found myself editing a lot of photos where I wanted them to have this general look. So I created that preset. So um, let's say, uh, or let me show you actually really quickly how to make this. So let's say, um, you know what, let's actually, I'll just do it from scratch, okay? So I'm gonna apply some global values. These are the values that I wanna apply to every single image, okay? So let's say like uh, you wanna, you really like a uh, little less detail in your black. So I'm gonna adjust my blacks. I really like contrast the image. I'll adjust my contrast. Um, I want a little bit more detail in the shadows. I want the highlights brought down, uh, maybe a little bit of clarity. Uh, I really love the dehaze tool. So maybe I'll dehaze this a little bit and uh, add some vibrance. Okay, so let's, let's, let's decide, yep, this is what I love. I'm gonna, I want this as an import preset. So when I put all my photos into Lightroom, they all get applied with these adjustments that I just made. 
So once you do that, you'll go over here to the left tab where it says presets. You'll hit this plus, create preset, and then you can title it whatever you want and you can select what values you want. So once you hit create, it'll save that as your uh, custom preset, okay? So I've just named mine uh, Sean Lara import preset or Sean Lara import or something like that. So now to apply those all to your images, what you wanna do is you go to the bottom left of Lightroom where it says import. And uh, let's wait for that to load. Okay, so on the right hand screen right here, okay, you will get a little, you see a little tab that says apply during import. Okay, so if it's unclicked, just make sure you uh, click that. And then under develop settings, right? This will allow you to find, or you can find your preset that you've made and select it. So then once you import all your images, it'll automatically apply that preset. And this has saved me so much freaking time, okay? So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and apply that preset again. So it's there. Great. And then now, step four. This is the, the boring part. This is where basically you get to watch me edit this wedding um, for the next couple hours. Um, and as I mentioned, you guys can ask me questions along the way and I will do my best to monitor the comments to my right here and answer them for you. But before we go into that, um, one thing that makes me a little more unique than other photographers and one way I've found that allows me to edit even qu more quickly is by culling and editing at the same time. So the traditional way, or I feel like what most photographers do or what most photographers I've seen do, they'll go through the gallery, they'll decide which ones they wanna edit, right? And then they'll go back and edit just those that they selected. But I've actually found if you call and edit at the same time, you're gonna actually be a little bit quicker with your editing. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I do and how I do that. So um, without further ado, uh, I am going to start here at the very beginning. I'm gonna show you exactly uh, what this wedding I shot. So I shot this about a month ago, a local venue here in Fort Collins. Um, and you're going to see exactly how I shot it, how, you know, what I did. I'm going to actually go through and, you know, talk about my process as detailed as I can. So before I do that, I'm going to pour myself a drink because I'm going to be here for a couple hours and I'm going to look at some of these comments. Uh, John Muno is asking, how many photos do you average per wedding, Sean? Um, I would say as a single shooter, I'm averaging around 3,000 photos per wedding. Um, this one was a little bit more. Uh, this one, let's see how many photos this is. Uh, 3,800. So this is actually quite a bit, this is on the very uh, top end of um, of my editing, or of my shooting, I should say. So this is actually quite a bit. Um, Radon Burton asking, what camera do you use? I use a Nikon uh, Z62, Z72, and a Z9. Um, Cameron's asking, have you tried any AI editing software? Not yet. Uh, however, I have used AI culling software, uh, Aftershoot, which is a really good, uh, really good program. Um, if you guys are, you know, want to try out some AI culling, I highly recommend them. Um, I think they are coming out or they just came out with, uh, AI editing. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I do want to try that. Um, so anyway, that's my recommendation there. Um, okay, so no more questions for now. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so again, trying to get these photos as perfect off the camera as I can. Um, and I there I might skip a couple photos just because I don't want you guys to be here all day um, because that's not fun for anyone. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna be here all day because I have to edit this wedding, but... Um, I might not show everything, but basically what I do as I go through is I star them, you know, the ones I want to keep, I, I mark them with a one. Uh, you can also do colors too. I know some people like, like to label them as blue or green or something like that. I just do stars. And then at the end of the gallery, uh, I'll actually just go ahead and select those stars and then export those. Um, another thing you're going to notice is I do already have some marked. Um, like I have one coming up that's marked. And the reason being is because I do teasers for my couples a week after the wedding. 
So um, I'll actually go, I've already been through the gallery very briefly once. Um, so I can, you know, kind of have an idea or so I can send them the best of the best. Um, so this getting this getting ready room was pretty, it was tiny, dude. It was tiny, it was cluttered. The light was just terrible. Um, so not a lot of really amazing uh, photo ops here, but you know, I did what I could. Um, when I shoot, when I shoot my prep, uh, I don't like to do a lot of like fancy off camera flash work. Uh, I just kind of shoot available light because I, I mean, unless I see something like I think that would really benefit from, uh, you know, getting creative with lighting, I pretty much just shoot it, you know, natural light with an 85. Uh, actually, this in this case, I'm shooting a 7200, but a lot of times I'll shoot with my 85. Um, my question is, how often do you wish Amber Henry was shooting the weddings with you to keep things fun? All the freaking time, girl. All the freaking time, man. I'm, I would love, 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 love to have you out here um, to second shoot for me. And I would love to second shoot for you, actually. So if there's any ever opportunities for me to come second shoot with you, Amber, uh, I will fly my ass out to Michigan and do that. So uh, Stacy's asking, are you using one, of the light, one Lightroom catalog for all your weddings? And sessions or do you create a new catalog for each wedding oh that's a good question um i personally do one catalog for per year um so if i do a lot of photo shoots um sometimes i'll do a couple uh, in case it, the catalog slows down a little bit but i actually haven't noticed that a difference like in speed like i know some people say like oh you need to do a new catalog for every wedding um that just slows down my that just slows down my process honestly like i don't feel i haven't found a legitimate need to create a new catalog for every single wedding that just it's just too much work i don't i don't think it's necessary um so anyway nothing overly creative uh at this wedding with the details uh and the prep this is very basic stuff like so um if you guys want to grab a drink or something right now is probably the time to do that because you're not going to see anything too exciting here um it's what's once we get to the portraits a little bit later um, that's kind of where my my style is able to kind of show through a little bit. So I just want to make sure, zooming in, make sure in this, this is sharp. It is. Okay. Bring up the shadows on that. I'm actually going to crop this a little bit tighter. And Lightroom is running a little bit slower right now uh, than normal just because I am, you know, running so many programs right now. You know, I'm running my, um, my, my streaming software um and, and everything so yeah it's gonna run a little bit slower than it usually does but not too much perfect okay uh what is going on here oh kind of just an awkward angle not a super you know moments like this where it's not really that amazing of a photograph i don't spend too much time on just because there's no point you know, unless it's like, I know it's like a money shot, I'll spend a little bit more time on it, but stuff like this, like, you know, they're not gonna care about it too much. Um, yeah, there we go, cool. So as you can see, as I'm going through these images, um, my import preset is applied to every single one of them already. So if you look at the right-hand side of my screen, uh, you can see that, you know, they're already good to go. A little warm. Okay. Yeah, this guy was this groom was pretty much already dressed by the time I got there. He just needed to put on his tie. A little actually, a little bit even too warm. There we go. So my, I know someone's gonna ask me this, so I'm just gonna say it now. Um, my delivery rate on photos is about, I found it to be about one in five. So for every five photos I take, I generally, on average, I'm, I'm at around, um, yeah, I'm at around uh, f one photo. Oh, that's a little soft, but that's okay. Crop this a little bit tighter. Um, so sometimes like, you know, like, uh, candid moments or something or really strong moments. I'll just use this as an example, even though it's really not that strong of a moment. Um, sometimes I'll put it in black and white. So I'll right click the image, create virtual copy of it, and then I'll apply my black and white preset that I've developed and do that. There you go. Now it's in a fancy black and white. 
Uh, are you rating them one as instead of X to remove them as your calling process? Yeah, so I'm just, so I'll show you at the very end. Um, but basically, yeah, so I, I filter at the very end, I filter, I go to library and I filter them all by rating. And I just select basically any, any photo that's, um, has a, a star on it is the way I do it. So, and as you can see, um, you know, I am going, I'm able to, even with all these programs that I have running right now, I'm able to go through them really quickly. And um, it's because of all the optimization I did earlier. So Bob's got a question. Um, I see that I'm using the eyedropper tool uh, essentially to adjust your white balance uh, by clicking on a white part of the scene. What do you do if there is no white part of the scene to select? And that's a very good question. And if there is no, there usually is, and if there, but if there's not, then you just got to manually color correct and it takes a little bit longer. Um, but again, I am trying to get my photos as perfect off the camera as I can. And you know, that's something I love, that's something I really love about mirrorless cameras now is you can see your, um, you can see your white balance in real time. And that's just so cool. So cool to me, you know? Um, okay. This is the group, someone was writing their vows. little underexposed so we're going to bring that up that's too warm um, that's too cool so we're going to meet in the middle there i generally like i generally go for um um warmer images i just always have so some of you as you're looking watching me editing you might think to yourself like oh that's a little bit warmer than um you know i would shoot it's probably correct. Oh, I got in the photo. So we're gonna go ahead and try to crop me out there. Shoot, okay. Yeah, we're just gonna do that. That was his nickname, Old Babe. <laughs> I thought that was funny. And then Turkey leg was someone else's nickname. So one thing I mentioned earlier is you want to try to get, you know, the photo as perfect off the camera as you can. Um, and occasionally, which you'll see in, as I'm editing, there are some shots where I will have to do a little bit more post-production and I'll have to pull them into Photoshop or something. Um, but even on those photos, like I'm shooting them with the intention that I, I know that I'm gonna have to pull it into Photoshop. So by the time I do bring it into Photoshop, I know exactly what I need to do. Um, and I'm not like, uh, I'm, so as opposed to using Photoshop as a tool to try to fix something I was careless about or just didn't really think about, uh, I'm using Photoshop um, with the intention uh, of using it bef you know, before I even put the photos on my computer. So I was shooting really warm here um, and I just wasn't paying attention. So it's actually, this is actually taking me a little bit longer than I normally would have to because I'm having to go through and now, you know, manually adjust the white balance on all these. Um, so if I took, you know, an extra second while I was shooting this to, uh, you know, make sure my white balance was a little bit better, or, you know, a little bit more on point, I would be spending less time doing this. Uh, I wait when you're accidentally caught in the mirror. Yes, I, uh, yeah, I was in the mirror a couple times. Sometimes in these tiny rooms, uh, that's a funny photo, I'm gonna leave it in. Uh, sometimes when you're in these tiny rooms, you know, it's just, uh, it's too, it's hard. It's really hard. Uh, this is kind of a cool, just kind of cool thing they have at the venue, is like a chandelier. So I just thought it was really neat. Little kind, of, Little tiny details like that, you know, sometimes people like. Uh, actually, my balance is pretty good, but we're going to bring it down a little bit. Okay, I get it.
Why is it keep... oh, it's annoying? Okay. All right. I told uh, the bride. Actually, that's a missed that. Uh, just little tiny details like this. It's just funny, you know. <laughs> um. So I told the bride here to hold the uh, hold the uh, the dress like a halibut. She had no idea what I was talking about. Um. I'm a big fisherman, so to me it was funny, but to her, I don't think it was. But I got her laughing. As you can see, she's got a nice, nice genuine smile on her face. Um. So she she thought it was funny. Kind of. <laughs> Maybe it was a pity laugh. I think right there, that's the moment where it's a pity laugh. Once again, if you guys have questions, please feel free to shoot them off to me. I've got quite a bit of viewers right now, which is awesome. Awesome to see. I hope you guys all have been having a great end of your wedding season for me i it's just always like a big breath of fresh air like for me like at the end of november uh i'd say mid-november just because you know by mid-october um it's done here it gets too cold um you know i live in the mountains and uh it gets very cold here as soon as you know november rolls around it's, it's snowed I shot a wedding on saturday and it snowed Hi, Cole. Cole is a, another Magmod ambassador. Awesome photographer from the East Coast. Um, this is just a candid shot of like, I don't know why, but they were hanging out in the park. The guys were hanging out in the parking lot for a minute. She, my, my truck made it in one of their wedding photos. <laughs> That's funny. You can see my little logo right there, Lara Photography. How many photos do you deliver to your clients for a typical wedding? Um, I tell them that they can expect between 50 to 75 photos per coverage hour for me. So if you hang around till the end um, of this video, or if you catch it at a later time, you will, will you'll get to see exactly how many photos I I uh, you know delivered. Okay, so not the most flattering facial expressions. So you kind of have to, in these situations you kind of have to like. You know make the decision well do i include one or not and to me they're not it's not a super important moment so i'm just gonna throw like one in and call it a day um this didn't come out really great because i was shooting through a mirror but i do think it is important moment even though the photo is just terrible um so i am going to throw this photo in though and i'm gonna spend just a couple seconds more editing this just because again it is kind of important even though the photo is just it's like I focused on her elbow and then I'm shooting through a mirror it's just not a good photo um so pretend just pretend I don't take that and that's another thing too is I tell people in my workshops is like you know it's really easy to uh I made it in the mirror there again it's really easy to like you know be on Facebook and like the magma community and all these other groups and see like you know photographers posting amazing images and you get kind of hung up like thinking to yourself like oh every single photo needs to be lit perfectly it needs to be posed perfectly and the reality of it is it doesn't you know um not every single photo has to be lit with flash uh doesn't need to be like absolutely perfect um and that's okay you know as long as it's lit decent you know and you know they're they're in focus and you're capturing the story of their day that's that's what's most important um and that's again why i don't shoot too much flash during my prep is because it's not really necessary um some photographers you know will, will disagree with me on that but that's just my opinion take it or leave it uh okay a couple more questions here what kind of discussions do you have with your clients about getting ready photos do you prep them about what to expect and what to and what to do to have the best photos um no uh i don't really um i don't really see these freaking mirrors man um, I don't really educate them too much. I just say, hey, I am going to want to take photos of your dress, of your details, you know, like your shoes, jewelry, stuff like that. So if you could have that stuff ready for me by the time I get there, that would be great. And that's about the only thing I educate them about in regards to the actual um, prep side of the day. Uh, not a great photo. That's okay. Again, 
tiny, 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 tiny room. Really tiny. Like my office. Yeah, my it was about this uh, size of my office. This, this whole getting ready room. Uh, and my office is very small, as you can see. I mean, you can probably see, you can see a corner of my office, but um, okay. Uh, shooting a school with 1,700 kids in December, so I'll be locked in the computer for a minute. Yes, you will, Bob. <laughs> wow, I, I don't envy you, but I, I do know that type of photography can be very lucrative and very successful, so. Um, Gretchen, yes, this was the best thing you told me that I keep reminding myself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, it's so easy to see, you know, on social media and get hung up that all your photos need to be absolutely perfect, and they don't. You know, because think about it, like a lot of photographers, well, most photographers are like showing what they feel like is the best of the best, right? They're not going to show stuff like what I'm show, like I'm showing you right now. And I don't care. Like, I don't, like, I've been doing this for 12 years. Everyone knows me. Uh, well, not everyone, but everyone watching this pretty much knows me. And you guys know I put out good work. Um, so I'm not afraid to show you kind of some of this just more boring stuff that's not, you know, like really reminiscent of my style that's not going to be traditional Lara photography um because again this is a real wedding this is a this isn't a style shoot um and i shoot it you know in a way that just makes sense okay and again as you're probably noticing i'm not even cropping that much because i try to get the photos as perfect off the camera as i can um, because I want to be spending more time fishing, racing cars, uh, doing DJing, the, my hobbies in life, you know, I don't want to be sitting at my computer all the time. Bring down that high level a little bit on that dress. So, so one of these moments is going to be really good to put in black and white. Um, and kind of, so like that one right there, that's going to be a solid moment to put in black and white. So we're, again, we're going to go ahead and, uh, first of all, get this photo oops didn't mean to do that there we go create virtual copy port my black and white preset shadows need to bring up a little bit clarity down there we go great great moment to put in black and white um sometimes like if they're not it's a really good photo when they like look back and a little out of focus, a little shutter blur there, because she, she turned her head kind of fast. But um, sometimes I'll say, like, hey, how's she doing back there? And, uh, you know, she'll turn and, and look at her bridesmaid or her mom or whoever's helping her get the, uh, you know, the dress buttoned up. Uh, I think she did it again there. Yeah, so, so, so um, going back to calling and editing, right? This photo is much stronger than that last one, because that last one was, like, a little blurry. So I'll just go back to it real quick and just uncheck it. Um, so that's kind of how I call and edit at the same time, right? Um, I'm good on that. <laughs> oh, this is a, this was an inside joke. She I had to make sure I do that. She has these like, she does these like T-Rex arms. <laughs> that's just her inside joke. So I got a photo of that. <laughs> um, yeah, as you can see, really messy room, really small room. Uh, not a flattering photo. <laughs> Although there she's being a goober intentionally, so we're gonna throw that in, but. Yeah, great moment. Now, um, as you're looking at my monitor, some of these photos may look a little bit um, like, they may look slightly out of focus or maybe even a little bit blurry. And that's just because I have, like that one That one actually is, but, um, but that's just because I have, uh, those one-to-one -one previews set <laughs> uh so it, it's it's generating like as i mentioned earlier a slightly lower quality image than the actual than what it actually is so if you're seeing like oh sean these photos are kind of uh kind of soft it, it, they're not they're they're in focus they're sharp except for that one and that one's a little soft too because she's moving all, she's moving a lot right now <laughs> and i'm shooting at a 45th second because the light in here sucks um, okay, I don't need to go through every one of these. Um, that one's cute.
Do you ever copy paste edits to a group of images to speed up your process? Yes, I do a lot actually, Radon. Um, so like if I'm if I find myself making like the same edits to a lot of these um, images, I'll do that. So for example, let me just show you it really quickly. So I just made I've actually been kind of making the same um, edits to all these photos right here. So what I'll do, just made the edits. I'll have this photo selected, then I'll hit shift, click on all the photos in that set. I'll go to sync. Make sure I have the correct ones I want uh, set, synchronize, and then it'll apply those same uh, settings to all those images. So now I don't have to keep making those, you know, white balance adjustments like I was making earlier. Um, which, so thanks for reminding me about that. Sometimes as I'm editing and educating and making sure my feed is running appropriately and doing a million things at once, sometimes it's easy to forget that stuff. So thank you. Oh yeah, this uh, her shoulder straps kept breaking. Um, which is funny actually this is the second uh this is the second time i've seen a bride wear this exact dress this year and um i, I didn't obviously tell her that because you know you want them to feel like they're you know every aspect of their wedding is unique um but the last bride i i had with this dress she was having the same exact problem her breast or her dress kept breaking <laughs> so uh that was a funny moment where is it there's like a handoff <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put the white balance set on that. What is the difference between paste and sync? Uh, they're the same thing. I think. Pretty sure they're the same thing. Do you deliver images all cropped at the same aspect ratio, or you crop in different aspect ratios later on? Um, that's a good question. So I, for the most part, I do deliver them all in the same exact aspect ratio, which is um. What is that? Four by three, two by three. Uh, it's basically five by or four by six format. Um, however, sometimes, like if I want an image that's a little bit more like landscape oriented, like a sixteen by nine, sometimes I will. Um, but for the most part, I'm always doing um, four by like a four by six uh, style crop. So yeah, um, that's a good question, and and that's just consistency. That's just for consistency, you know. I I think it gives me it gives me a headache if you know you had you were looking at the final gallery. And there's uh, too much, um, you know, like too much just inconsistency with your crops. Um, and, you know, part of, you know, delivering a luxury product is being consistent. And I think that's super important. Okay. So I think we're, oh, whoa, what happened there? Oh, 4,800, not 48,000. So here we go. Uh, <laughs> her pressed or her dress, her dress, Colby. Okay, this is a, uh, is this first look? Yep, first look, okay. So here I'm walking with her. There we go, adjusted my settings there a little bit. Yeah, really pretty bride, really uh, good looking groom. Uh, super awesome couple too. They're they're young, uh, they're young. I, I don't know how old they were, I guess maybe early 20s. Um, but really, uh, really awesome, nice people. And uh, most of my couples are like that. You know, I, I try to do a really good job, like vetting myself or vetting, you know, my clients before I book with them. But, um, you know, obviously, like any anything in the service industry, occasionally you get the bad apple. Um, but now yeah, these guys were super chill, really nice, really friendly. Um, really appreciative of, of my hard work at the end of the night, which, you know, doesn't always happen. It's just, um, it's just nice to kind of get that validity that you're, you know, what you're doing and the hard work you're putting into it, it goes appreciated. This is something like I see grooms doing all the time is they kind of make these like awkward, like faces before the first look. And I think it's just cause they're nervous, but like, I wish they'd be like, cause I'm not, I'm not coaching them here. Right. This is a real moment. Um, I wish they'd smile more, but like, I, obviously as he's turning around, like, you know, he's, he's got that look. And uh, this is this would be actually a great one to put in black and white. Were those prep photos with your 14 and 24 or my 24 to 70? Uh, neither. Um, I shoot um, with two lenses uh, pretty much all day. I shoot with uh, uh, 14 to 30 and a 7200. And um, sometimes I, sh I will shoot with an 85 uh, during prep as well. If, if it's a really low light situation. Um, 
kind of an awkward pose, but I think it adds, it's not a pose, it's just aw awkward expression, but I think it adds to the moment, you know, like she's like kind of giddy and she's excited and that's just like, she, she, she's very, uh, she's a very expressive, uh, person. Like, like I am like, I like to move my, my arms around and stuff and she's the same way. So, you know, that's part of their personality. I think it's important that you highlight that. Um, I feel like, again, people, I'm venting to you all, but I feel like people, you know, get so hung up on just like, oh, the photo, everything has to be perfect. The lighting, the pose, the, the expressions, and it, it doesn't, you know, like, obviously you don't want to like, like, you don't want to throw in like that, like this shot right here, right? Like we're just not the most flattering, <laughs> you know, where they're, they're, they're like sucking face. Like that, that's obviously a photo that, you know, you're not going to want to throw in, but, um, you know, sometimes like, you know, they make, they make goofy faces and that's part of their personality. And you want to make sure you highlight that because part of being a wedding photographer, in my opinion, is, um, being a photojournalist. Do you expose for the highlights and adjust the shadows or expose for the shadows and just for the highlights? Um, that's a great question. Um, and this is something I actually talk about in my workshops uh, and something I go over a lot in my upcoming wedding photography bootcamp, uh, which registration opens for at the end of this month. And um, I expose for the highlights, always expose for the highlights. It's, e it's much easier to recover shadows than it is highlights. Um, and uh, oh, here's her dress breaking again. Um, so I, I, and I will be, I teach that in person uh, during my workshop of uh, Colby and Gretchen, who are both watching right now, can attest to that. Um, but I, I break it down to make it really easy um, for you guys. So if that is something you're, you're struggling with or you want to learn more about, please definitely sign up for my workshop coming up. Um, I think that um, is a really big part of my photography is adjusting for those highlights. So believe it or not, I'm actually editing a little slower than I normally would because, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you guys and answering questions. But as you can see, I'm already almost a quarter of the way through this entire wedding. Like, and I've only been what? It's only been how long have I been editing for? I don't know. 30, 20, 30 minutes at the most. So I know a lot of the photos you've seen right now aren't really like, you know, very reminiscent of my style, but we're about to, um, this, everything I've shown you guys so far has been natural light. Um, but we're going to jump into some off camera flash stuff here actually very soon. Um, so keep, uh, keep watching and, and you'll kind of see how I edit some of my off camera flash stuff. Uh, oh, here's a bride gift to the groom. Yes, so Radon, every single photo you've seen so far has been shot with natural light. I haven't used um, haven't used any flash yet. I haven't touched flash once. Oh, actually, that's not true. Uh, I did use off-camera flash on those dress shots at the very, very, very beginning. Um, but besides that, yeah, all the photos with people so far, I have shot with natural light. Okay, she's pointing. This is a good moment. She's pointing at her bridesmaids who were um, kind of not so discreetly uh, staring because um, she was gifting him a boudoir album. And uh, they all knew that and they wanted to like see his reaction. So, which you guys will see as well. And they're, they're all embarrassed that, uh, they're all embarrassed that they caught her, they caught him looking. Although they, you know, hiding behind a tree isn't the most, isn't the best way to be discreet. <laughs> um, so here he is. Uh, that's actually not a great photo. And actually, I know the photographer. I didn't. I don't do boudoir. Um, but I know the. Uh, I know the photographer that shot um, her boudoir photos and. She's really good. Her name's Lisa. She's a local photographer here in Fort Collins. Uh, 
this is this is funny because we're going through the story, right? He has no idea what this is. Like he has no idea, and he sees, oh, it's an album. Okay. Um. By the way, before a lot of you ask, um, you probably noticed this little hair sticking out. Um, for and I I could edit those out, but you know, for like these moments like this, I don't. I don't want to go through every single one and edit it, but for some of like the actual post portraits, I will edit that out. Um, but for this, I don't want to take my time editing every single photo. Like this just, it would take me way too long and it's not necessary. If they ask me, then that's a different story. Um, do you have a second shooter at this wedding? Nope, Jason, um, these are all single shooter. This is all me. I actually, I don't really like having a second shooter that often uh, I, I actually prefer to shoot solo um and uh for the reason i told you guys earlier you know like i i when i have a second shooter you know no one this is gonna make me sound arrogant but no one shoots as good as me and what i mean by that is they're not i'm not trying to say they're not as talented as me because that's definitely not the case they just don't shoot the way i shoot and i shoot in a way where I have to do as little editing as I can. And not everyone, some people are like that. Some of the second shooters are like that, but not all of them. Um, there are a couple second shooters that I do prefer to work with. Um, and I generally will select them a little bit more than others because I know, hey, like when I bring their photos into Lightroom, I won't have to edit them as much. Um, oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, so yeah, this one though is, is just one photographer. This is just me. Oh, really? Yes, really. The evolution of the face he's making is priceless. Yep, I agree. And that's why I am kind of, I did, I was taking a lot of photos here. Uh, and I was, uh, you know, including a lot of these. Yep, see right there. That is a very good photo. And I'm actually going to spend just a minute more editing this. Like his reaction there is priceless. And I'm going to actually convert one of the, probably this one to black and white actually, uh, or maybe this one, because her reaction is a little bit better there. Um, I did not see these, uh, you know, obviously I'm not trying to be a creeper and, uh, oh, be like, hey, can I see the photos of you naked? Like, I'm not gonna be that guy. So I, I, I don't know what he's looking at. Uh, I mean, I know it's, um, I know it's, it's her naked or half naked. Um, which is why, you know, he's getting this reaction, but you know, you know, the, the great thing is, um, you know, you don't need to see the photo to know what's going on. And that's why, you know, these photo as, as photo journalists, you know, it's so important to capture the emotions of, of what's going on. At what point does the second shooter come into the equation? Does the couple usually request one? Um, so for me, um, I actually, I, so I will say this, I, <laughs> As far as my editing is concerned, I, uh, that's actually a great photo too. Um, I hate having second shooters, but I do, what with that said, I do recommend a second shooter to the couple because at the end of the day, it, it is better storytelling to have two photographers there. You know, you have more angles, more opportunities to capture camera the moments. So for me, uh, I offer it as a standalone item. So I, I tell them like, yep, you can add on a second photographer. Here's A, B, here are the reasons why I recommend one. Um, and then my top package, uh, Cameron, which you've, you've shot a lot of my top package weddings with me, um, it's included. Yeah, so Cameron who just commented, he's one of the uh, photographers that regularly second shoots with me. I really enjoy using him, um, A, because he's very talented, B, because he gets his photos pretty damn good straight off the camera, and C, he shoots Nikon, like me, so. And he ha and he has an awesome taste in music. So there's four reasons. Yeah, so I'm just throwing in a ton of these because his his reactions are just so priceless. And I think this is part of the reason why I actually took so many photos at this wedding was because I was just taking so many uh, photos of just his awesome reactions to this. Um, as you can see, like I took like, well, I think like a hundred photos of just this interaction. Yeah, Nikon gang, FTW. Honestly, though, I get I get asked all the time, oh, what's better, Canon, Nikon, Sony? And I'm like, dude, they're all good. Just shoot with what you're comfortable with. 
Um, I will say though, and this is just my opinion, take it with a grain of salt. Um, I have edited regularly files from Canon, Sony, Nikon, and a little bit of Fuji. And I fight me if you don't agree. Um, I do believe that straight off the camera, Nikon has the best colors out of any other camera system out there. Um, way better than Canon, way better than Sony. Uh, Fuji's pretty close. Um, but, yep. Someone will disagree with me for sure. Uh, it also depends, I think, on your um, your style too, you know, and how you process. Like I know like a lot of dark and moody photographers uh, will shoot Canon because I feel like the color profiles on Canon cameras straight off the camera lend itself a little bit better to that style. Um, okay, here we go. So uh, we're starting to get into portraits now. Um, so I, first thing I always do, whether it's an engagement session, portrait session, wedding, I always do just some traditional shots. You know, I feel like, again, we, we focus too much on just trying to get like really creative and more than like, I'd say half the time, a lot of the photos they end up like posting on their social media and stuff and they print are just these traditional shots, you know? Um, so it's really important to, to get a lot of these actually. Um, yeah, I hate canon mirror i hate canon colors straight off the camera um i don't like editing them sometimes in certain lighting situations um canon colors look really good like for example um one thing i've noticed is like during golden hour shots canon colors are phenomenal so like in certain situations yeah i i really do it you know, i really do enjoy uh you know kind of color profiles from other cameras and, and from canon but um as far as just all around i i I do believe Nikon has the best color profile, um, just from my personal experience. I'm sure there's some techie like nerds out there that will like tell me why I'm wrong, and that's fine. This is just my opinion, um, but yeah. Like I said, there's not I'm not I'm not I'm not one of those guys who's on the like on the the on Facebook saying like oh like if you shoot Canon you're wrong or you shoot Sony you're wrong Nikon for life yo. Um, you know, whatever. As long as you're a good photographer, that's all that matters. Okay, so I was, tell I was telling him here, uh, okay, tell her what you had for breakfast this morning in a super sexy voice. And uh, that's what exactly what he's doing here. Um, that's actually would be a good one to put in black and white too. Where's Jeff to argue with us? I know, right? So Jeff was my co-host for the astrophotography workshop I, I, I hosted back in August. And he's like, he's a super technical photographer. Like you have any questions on like the technical aspects of photography and like equipment, he, he just knows. He just knows, he just knows everything. Like for me, like I'm not super technical. I just, I know how to use my stuff, uh, my gear and my equipment. And if it works, perfect. So as you're, you're 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 looking at my style, my photos right now, and you're saying, "Oh, like wow, Sean, you're blowing up the highlights and everything." That's not like you. Um, it's not. But again, for just some of these like traditional standard shots, I want to get some of the natural light shots. Here is where I start using off-camera flash, right? So I'm really getting it dialed in here. I selected this one already because I put this as a teaser. But now I'm starting to use off-camera flash. Um, so I'm you know I'm having her turn towards the light. Have my light set up camera left. Um, I'm going to just throw in one more as well. Crop this one just a little bit tighter. A couple traditional shots of her. So these are all pretty much, so I have that one selected already, um, but I'm going to select a couple more just with varying uh, facial expressions. And again, for those of you who are just tuning in, um, I'm barely even touching the edits on these because I've already implied all my pr import presets. So ev all the global adjustments that I've already, I already, you know, would normally make, they're already applied. So I just maybe have to do minor uh, corrections. Like, you know, if I really like, you know, effed up uh, on my shooting, but you know, as you've seen, I haven't really screwed up at all once. Um, and that just comes with experience. You know, like I, I've, I've shot close to 600 weddings. Um, I can't believe I'm even saying that. Yeah, it's that many. Uh, I shot close to 600 weddings. And um, I, you know, it just comes with experience. 
Okay, some more off-camera flash stuff. Bring down those highlights. Bring up the shadows. Okay, so in this shot, his little hair sticking up is is gonna bug me. So we are gonna edit that out. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just get this healing brush tool. Oh, a little high. Yeah, that's fine. Does it, because I'm shooting so wide, it doesn't need to be perfect. Wow, that is so many weddings. Hi, Megan. Yeah, dude, it's a lot of weddings. Um, I've been doing this a long freaking time. Uh, long time, 12 years. This is 2022 is my, um, it's my 12th year. Um, I have been shooting weddings pretty much full time since I was 20 years old. Before I could even legally drink, I was shooting weddings. Yeah. Speaking of drink. So his little hair sticking up is bugging the crap out of me now because it's part of a portrait. Um, so now we're going to, you know, go ahead and fix these. Um, oh, a little sensor dust. That's the other thing. Uh, another tip I should have probably thrown in. Clean your sensors uh, so you're spending less time doing what I just did and getting rid of those sensor spots out of the sky. Oh, there's another one right there. So if I had just cleaned my camera uh, beforehand, uh, I'd save me an average 30 seconds on each photo, which is huge when you're going through 3,800. Makes a big difference. Oh, that looks terrible, actually. All right, hold on. We got to spend a little more time on this image. So this is, I, if I'm spending, if I'm spending more than like 30 seconds on a photo, I get really annoyed because again, I want to be, you know, not spending my life behind a desk and computer. I want to be out fishing, DJing, trading Pokemon cards, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm good with that. How do you clean your sensor? So, um, you, uh, go to Amazon. I can send you a link, Gretchen, but you'll go to Amazon. You'll buy a sensor cleaning kit. Comes with some solution and some swabs. Um, and basically you just put a dab of the solution on your swab. Uh, you open, if, if you have a DSLR, you open the mirror on your camera. Uh, if you're shooting mirrorless, uh, you don't even need to worry about that. Um, and you just give it two. uh, first you take one of these little air blowers right here, blow out, uh, you know, hold your camera, like basically upside down, blow some air and then take the swab one, one way, the other way, and then you're done. That's pretty much it. Um, there's like a million, uh, videos on, on YouTube that you can check out. Um, which I do recommend if you've never done it before you, t you, you, uh, check it out. Ah, oh, stupid hair, stupid, stupid hair. I'm just jealous because I don't have hair. I used to have beautiful hair though. Man, I was beautiful. It was long and luscious. It was uh, pretty incredible actually. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. This stupid thing. Uh, sometimes for like really technical edits, I'll pull them into to, uh, Photoshop, which I will actually show you guys later. Um, cause there are a few images in this gallery, um, where you'll see that I have to do that. Um, and this is actually, this might be one of those images because I'm having a hard time, having a hard time editing out without it looking unnatural. Yeah, that's bugging me. All right. I'm going to show you how I do this in Photoshop. So, or what I have to do when I have to pull an image into Photoshop. So what you do is right click on the image. Edit in Photoshop. This is gonna take a second to load. I don't have Photoshop open, so it's gotta open and it's gotta open and then it's gotta open the image. So I'm gonna take a sip of this. Try the new button for masking. Um, yeah, uh, I have tried it. Doesn't work the same. Maybe it does. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, as a lot, that's not true. I've tried it. I just haven't used it in detail as much as I probably should have. Okay, so, uh, oh, where'd it go? 
Oh, it just crashed on me. Photoshop just crashed on me. Okay. So we're going to let that open again. And then we're going to, once again, edit in Photoshop. And then we're going to go back to Photoshop. There it is. Okay. Zoom in. We're going to decrease the size of the brush. Boom. Yeah, no crap of Photoshop quit unexpectedly. And then you hit Command S and then you go back to Lightroom and then it'll bring the image back right here, uh, right there. And then I usually hit a two, just so I know that's the one um, that I edited. So when I go back, I don't accidentally also select the image um, that was the original. Okay, uh, there's some walking shots here. Uh, there we go. We're going to go ahead and bring down the uh, highlights. Actually, yeah, actually, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do one of the new Lightroom features. We're going to select the sky because um, I didn't underexpose the sky as much as I would like. So we're going to select the sky. Um, we are going to bring down the exposure just a tad. As well as highlights. Cool. Okay, there's that. Uh, this one I already edited because I uh, gave this to them as part of their teasers. Yep, uh, I like that one as well. We're going to throw that in too. Neat. Okay, so here's a couple where I will need to pull the photos into Lightroom, or excuse me, into Photoshop and edit out the stands. Um, so. Here's an example of one right here as a videographer. So we're going to go ahead and first make our global adjustments. Okay. Uh, bring up the shadows. Crop this videographer out. Make sure that horizon's level. No, too much dehaze. There we go. Them Colorado mountains in the back I love so much. Yeah, man, this is uh, this, these aren't even mountains. These are hills. <laughs> yeah, these are not mountains. This is uh, these are hills. This is in the front range. So it's you know, not, we're not in the mountains. We're on the base of the mountains. Okay. Let's go ahead and Photoshop this light stand out. No sandbag, you're brave. Oh, yeah, dude, I hate using sandbags. I only use them. Um, I only use them when it's windy. Um, and I did actually have them set up here for the, the ceremony because the ceremony um, got really, it was actually raining, um, which you'll see. It, it was pouring rain actually during the ceremony um, and it was windy. So I, I had sandbags set up for those. Um, okay, let's go back to Lightroom. There it is. So these will take a little bit longer to edit just because I do have to, you know, bring them all into Lightroom and uh, edit these, um, you know, edit these light stands out. Um, so we're going to do the same thing on this one. What tool are you using here? So what I use uh, to edit out the light stands is I just use the helium brush tool. Um, I found it to be the easiest and the quickest. Holy crap, how tall is your light stand? So um, I use a um, 12 foot light stand. Um, something I talk about in my workshops is um, if you're not using a light stand that's at least at least 10 feet tall, maybe you can get away with nine, um, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it really wrong. Need, you need those light stands nice and high for for a lot of reasons, which I won't get into in this video. Um, but there are a lot of reasons why you need a very tall light stand. Um, so nine, like I said, nine feet or taller. I use twelve. I use twelve footers. 
Um, these are kind of the same, so I don't, okay, that one's, I think, is he blinking there? Nope, he's not blinking. This kind of looks like he is. But we are going to bring up these shadows a little bit. Oh, too much. I still like a little bit of contrast and a and, and little bit of loss of detail in the shadows. It's just my style. Um, I don't want everything, like, I don't want it to start looking um, too, like, HDR. Because um, then once you get to that point, it's uh, it just looks fake. It doesn't look real. Have you ever tried the content fill option in Photoshop and using the healing tool? Yep. Um, I sure. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I do. Um, although I found that it's not always as accurate. So like, let's actually just for the for the sake of art, let's try it. Okay. So let's let's select this. Okay. We use a content aware. And it'll probably do a decent job. Sometimes it does, but I found a lot of times it doesn't. And I, I just, I want to use what I know is going to work. And I don't want to play, have too much guesswork. So let's see, let's see how it does. My guess is it'll do an okay job, but it won't be perfect. Um, So it actually did, yeah, it, it did an okay job except for right here. Um, which I'm going to have to edit out a little bit. Um, So in that case, it, it worked. Uh, but I still had to go back and kind of edit the bottom of it, so... Do you have a light modifier on your light? In this case, no. I was because it was so bright outside. I was just using bare bulb on. I was just using bare bulb on the uh, Decoder GT two hundreds. Okay, back to Lightroom. There it is. Oh, oh, there it is. Come on. Oh, it's running a little slow now because again, I have so much stuff running. Okay. Um, is that the bouquet sitting on the ground? Uh, yes, that was that was um, there was a bouquet sitting on the ground. Uh, I did notice that uh, when I shot the image and when I'm editing right now, and it doesn't bother me enough to edit it out. Um, I think it adds to the story. Um, yeah. If it was something I felt like detracted from the image, then I would get rid of it. But I, in my opinion, I think it kind of adds to the story actually a little bit, so it doesn't bother me. More natural light stuff. Um, again, a lot of the photos you guys see me post on online are you know kind of the, the hero shots where I use off-camera flash because uh, that's what I like to do. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're here to service the client. You're not here to service your ego or your service your portfolio, um, and that means you need to give them a lot of variety. Um, So, and obviously natural light photos, you can edit much quicker. Um, so I generally try to, I don't really like it so much from a posing perspective when they have their chin up too high like that. Um, so I, I, in retrospect, I should have had her kind of tilt her head down a little bit. Um, which is why I usually will tell the grooms like, hey, kiss their, kiss her temple as opposed to her like cheek. Um, so I think I actually tried to correct it a little bit here. Yeah, there you go, exactly, right there. I, I told her, I told him, hey, kiss her temple, not her cheek. Um, Cause you don't want to really look up their nose, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, same, well now he's going back to her cheek. Um, right, but so just something to try to avoid. Um, yeah, not not the best. So I'm actually not going to include that because it's just not a it's not a flattering pose. That one's better. Still not great. Um, so I don't I don't remember the why I didn't fix it in the moment. I don't remember why I didn't, but coulda woulda shoulda. Uh, okay. Uh, these are also off camera flash shots. Believe it or not, or were these? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, these were off. I think these were off camera flash. That was just just a touch. And as I'm shooting this, I noticed these guys were in the background, which kind of bugged me. So I think I changed my angle. Um, actually, no, these weren't. These are natural light. I'm shooting just. I'm just shooting hard light here. I'm just shooting hard light. These are not. Um, 
I thought I was using flash to fill in the shadows a little bit, but I, yeah, this is just hard light, uh, hard natural light. Um, coming up though, I did shoot some of these. So as you can see, like I'm going through these pretty quickly. I'm not looking at every single one because I know what I shot, you know, um, and that's a big part of, you know, delivering your images and editing your images is knowing what you shot. So you're not having to go through every single one. Um, so in this case, I am going through because I'm looking for a photo that where his facial expression is a little bit better. Um, I think he's just talking to her. Yep, right there. So that's a good photo. That's a good expression on his end. Um, so usually like the second after they say something funny or sexy or whatever it is, um, that you'll get that good reaction. Oh, I wish I didn't. Yeah, there we go. I fixed it there. Where I didn't cut off the top of their head. When do you use your Z9 versus the Z6 II and why? Um, so there's no reason why I use one camera over the other. I just have... I ha I use the um, 7200 on the Z9 that just stays on that camera all day, and then I use the 14 to 30 on my Z62, and that stays on there all day. Um, so I don't um, really will I won't like pick one camera over the other, um, or like switch lenses between the two. It's just what I, I just have it set to, um, you know, just as it is. Um, so I I like the Z9 is significantly better camera than the um, Z62. Um, and I shoot most of my photos on the day of a wedding with my 7200. So I have, so I, I put that lens on the camera, or excuse me, I put, I use my camera on the lens that I use the most, which is the 7200. So um, actually, if you want to see, I can show you really quick um, how, what my ratio is. So I shot 30. 800 images and I, li I literally only use two lenses on this wedding. I actually didn't even use my macro lens or my 85. I literally only use two lenses this entire wedding. I shot uh, 28,000 photos or excuse me, tw not 28,000, 2,800 photos on my 70 to 200 and a uh, 1,000 photos on my 14 to 30. So yeah, literally, yeah, just realized that I only use two lenses for this entire wedding. Um, yeah. So you, now for, I know for a fact I'm using off-camera flash here. Um, and I don't even need to do any edits to them because I got them so freaking perfect off the camera. Obviously my import preset is applied, but that's it. Actually, I do like that last photo. We're going to throw it in too. Uh, I don't do these photos a ton where I kind of like shoot down but I do think it's a good, kind of good to include sometimes. Um, actually, one of these will be probably, probably pretty good to shoot, or also put in black and white. 3,800 photos, the most I've ever done is 1,800, and I think I might take in excessive photos. Um, you know, there's, there's no right or wrong way. 3,800 is actually kind of a lot for me, as I mentioned. I think on the average night or average eight hour wedding, I'm shooting around 2,800, so like a thousand left, less. Uh, but then you talk to like someone like Two Man, for example, and they shoot, you know, 15,000 a wedding. Um, different strokes for different folks, you know. Um, it kind of just depends on what your, um, you know, what works for you. Uh, I do encourage you though. Um, not to overshoot, but you need to shoot enough so, you, you know, you get you get the moment, right? Like, don't undershoot just for the sake of thinking to yourself, like, oh, like, I don't want to be in Lightroom forever. Um, but you, you do need to shoot. Uh, there has to be that balance, right? You have to have that balance. Uh, beautiful bouquet. Really pretty bouquet. Um, sometimes you have to watch out for this and I think I may have corrected it when you have them look over the shoulder, sometimes they get these little wrinkles in their, uh, neck and you just kind of have to watch out for that. Um, let me see. I think, yep, I corrected it right here. Um, still a little bit, but not as pronounced. And one, one way you can kind of do that is by having them rotate their shoulders a little bit towards the camera some more or bringing their elbow back. 
Yeah, okay. Oh, so I was just doing more photos of her here because the groom was grabbing his the bridesmaids and the groomsmen. So I just did a couple more here while I was waiting. So I wasn't just, you know, sitting there twirling my thumbs. Just in case you're wondering, why are you taking more photos of the bride? You already did. You already did that. And then I think he came back. Or maybe I'm getting my timelines wrong, but. Yep, so here we go. By the way, um, the re if you guys saw the photo shoot I did recently um, of me, my buddy Jared Fix took some photos of me. You may have saw that green suit I was wearing. Um, this groom was wearing the same company, same company of suits that made my suit as well. They make uh, really good stuff, really, really good stuff. Uh, as far as like fitting and everything is concerned, I. I can't speak to the quality because I've only owned my suits from them for you know a couple months now, but um, time will tell. Time will tell. So just doing a couple of him. Usually we'll have them. I'll say okay, button and unbutton the the jacket for me, just to kind of get that motion. Okay, I'm gonna try to skip ahead on some of these here because we've already gotten enough. I'm trying to get a little more creative with my light here, so I'll probably bring down my highlights. Oh, too much on the exposure. Bring up the shadows just a tad. Perfect. I'm gonna create a virtual copy of this. I'm also gonna throw it in black and white as well. Lost your video, Sean. I hope not. Oh, yep, you sure did. Um, hold on a second. Let's uh, let that load back up. One second. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. This camera auto shuts off for some reason. Give me a second. Let me uh, figure out why this isn't working. Oh. Uh, I'm not sure. So we're just going to use, uh, well, I can use my, um, the built-in camera if I need to, but for some reason, let me just try to get this to load back, figure out why it's not loading back up. Not sure. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just use my crappy built-in camera. Um, let's try one more time, though. One more time. Um, yeah, that's so weird. I don't know why it's doing that. OK, we're going to use the crappy FaceTime camera. All right, going back to this. Now you can get a view of my, my dog, Liam, here. He's sleeping. Okay, moving on to wedding party photos. Sean Lara has now changed his name to Webcam Utility. Yep, sure has. Uh, I think the reason why I did that is I'm I usually use a Z7 II to record these, but I... Uh, um, I'm using the Z50 right now, and for some reason it does like an auto shut off. I don't understand why. Okay, so right after I start, or once I started shooting these uh, bridesmaid portraits, the the wind picked up quite a bit. Uh, there was a storm rolling in, so there, unfortunately there's a lot of photos where they kind of have some some hair blowing in their face. But all these are lit with uh, off camera flash just to help balance those exposures between the highlights and. Uh, you know, has in the background, and because I don't like blowing up backgrounds. Get him to laugh here. Okay. So we are 
at 1366 out of 3800 so um this is like i said this is going to be a long video for sure if you guys are sticking with me through the end i appreciate it but uh i'm looking at the time we've been going for an hour and a half already so i don't want to um probably not going to show everything just because <laughs> awkward photo just because you know I, it, it will take a little bit of time but if if needed i can skip ahead to like the reception or, or something like that um, but for now you know i'm just kind of showing you my process um, and i did say i was going to show you how i edited a wedding from start to finish so i want to stick true to that but i think you guys for the most part kind of have the have an idea of my approach um, and if you caught the at least the first you know 20 minutes of my video then we're going to be in good shape Okay, yeah, so there's the wind again, just kind of blowing all over the place. Not the most flattering, but it is what it is. One or two lights. Uh, I'm using two lights, Radon. These are two lights for all these. One at basically like four and um, four and eight o'clock. Want to fill in as many shadows as possible. Kind of get that even light so we don't have those awkward shadows on their face. <laughs> oh, there's a couple of funny photos coming up of the groomsmen that I think you guys will really like. So if you're thinking of leaving, hang on just for another another few minutes because we got some really funny photos coming up. <laughs> uh, really, really good ones. I always like to have them do the huddle, kind of a more casual shot, then I'll have the bride and groom kiss. Uh, and then I ask, hey, kiss the person next to you. And most of the time, I just kind of get like funny, awkward reactions. But in this case, actually, a lot of them started kissing each other, which is really funny. Um, but yeah, I always like doing that. It just gets, gets some nice natural reactions out of people. Um, oh yeah, I took a photo of the back of her dress because it was all wet. <laughs> they were making fun of her for it. Okay, uh, so here's the groom's party. So he had two br uh, bridesmen, brides, grooms, brides. I don't know, grooms, brides. That's a good. That's a good shot right there. Okay, perfect. I just like, I always say, hey, mess with the groom a little bit. Give him a hard time. Get some funny reactions like this. <laughs> that was their idea, not mine, for the record. Keep looking at this camera like it's still recording. Um, but I forget I had to switch to this camera. <laughs> Okay, individuals. Pretty boring stuff, but hey, it's important as far as wedding photography is concerned. Actually, I don't like that photo. Bridesmaids are <laughs> just messing around doing their T-Rex arms. <laughs> That's a great, I love that photo. That's just, see, like, stuff like this, you know? It's just, it's just, like, great, just great stuff. Great stuff. Okay. Okay, now we're moving on to family photos. Uh, photos of mom and son. Brother and sister. Mother and father. But let's find a better one. There we go. Father and son. Today you become a man. That's that's the the hand. That's what they're doing there. A little hot on the exposure. Let's tone that down. Again, at this point, like because you know, going back to step one, you know, because I am, um, you know, trying to get making a really conscious effort to get the photos as perfect off the camera. 
you know, at this point, I'm not even really editing. I'm just kind of culling. And that's just going to really speed up your process. So, um, again, we're at about, I think we're maybe at an hour of editing right now. And I've edited um, prob about a little over a third of this entire wedding. So um, when all is said and done, this wedding is probably going to take me, like if I was like talking to you guys at like three hours, if I was just by myself and just focused on this and not worrying about anything else, probably about two and a half hours. Um, so as you can see, my editing process is just really, is really quick. Um, please feel, and, and for those of you who are just tuning in, um, you may have missed a lot of really important, crucial info um, at the beginning. You'll be able to watch this late at a later time as well. I'm gonna post it on YouTube, um, as well as there'll be a replay in this group, Portrait Photographer's Resource. So um, please feel free to uh, check that out later, but also ask questions right now during the live feed if you're tuning in live. Uh, why does she keep looking away? I don't get it, that's annoying. And I tell them like, hey, look at me, and they don't. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, my lighting's actually pretty damn good here. I'm actually really happy with this lighting. Um, this is all off-camera flash. All off-camera flash with two lights, two Geek Coda G2200s. Oh, missed one. Perfect. So I sh there, um, if you guys stick around to the end, you'll see the sunset uh, this evening was freaking spectacular. Probably one of the best sunsets I've ever captured um, it, at a wedding. Um, I think the best one I've ever captured was actually last year um, in December at a wedding. Uh, but this one was just stupid, it was stupid good. Um, and you, you guys have probably seen, I posted the photo in, in the group, I think once or twice already. How long were you at this wedding taking pictures? Oh, uh, I read that wrong. So I, they booked me for a eight hour package. So I was here for eight hours. This is an eight hour day for me. Okay, here are the fun photos. So, uh, <laughs> they had all these um, these these uh, this underwear that said um, groom on it. And I actually didn't know that they had them. And it was like a last minute thing. So I actually shot these natural light because I, I took down my lights because I was going to bring them in. Or I was putting them away. And they're like, oh, yeah, we have these this underwear. Uh, so I got a photo of all them doing this. Um, and then right here, yep, grabbing each other's ass. <laughs> yeah, this is funny. This guy on the left, I was so, like, actually, I think the two guys on the outside were like so like weirded out about like taking their pants down. <laughs> um, and then they had socks too, so I had I had them pull their pants all the way down. Um. So we could see their, so we could see their, their socks too. Pretty awesome. There we go. I yep, already edited that one. All right. So uh, this point, um, done with family photos. I think we're gonna move on to details. If I remember correctly. Yep, moving on to details. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna get a couple, throw a couple of these candid moments in there. Um, okay, Google dolls were great, by the way. Well, hello there, Scott. I'm sure they were. So these guys had a super epic um, pretzel bar. 
so cool as you can see from these photos here um really neat i i definitely i definitely had a pretzel absolutely had one of these i love food so and especially when i'm at weddings i get freaking hangry man so if there's ever food i'm not i'm not shy about taking food like i know like some photographers are like oh like you know we're the help we're hired like we shouldn't have any food no nah, no nah, bro like if i see food I'm, I'm going for it i don't care do not care so like i i had a pretzel i had a, some cheese i had some some meat um so yeah this is i so the 30 so i like to stop photos um all posed photos i should say uh at least 30 minutes before the ceremony um that way a i can get we'll do this get photos of like all the details set up because but in theory they should all be set up by now um but also just because you know guests start arriving and you want to tuck you know the couple away so the guests don't see them prematurely so at this point i'm just doing um um you know detail shots sometimes i'll shoot off camera flash for these detail shots um but i've been getting a little bit more late lazy lately because i'm starting to realize like dude couples don't care if you know their details are are lit with flash like they don't care um as long as you capture them that's all that matters um but sometimes you know i, I will light stuff it just depends it just kind of depends a on my mood and b if i feel like it would really benefit um but i did obviously like the reception um with flash which you will see later um my lighting was actually i if i remember correctly i think my lighting was kind of on point here so as you can see a uh, storm is rolling in uh we are very close to go time and um right as the uh ceremony started it it just poured rain absolutely dumped and you'll you'll see it here in like just a couple minutes um Oh, I had to take a photo of this. Uh, this as, as you guys know, I'm a, I'm a watch guy. And this guy is, is legitimately wearing a fake Rolex. Like, it's completely fake. Um, and it actually kind of fooled me. I thought it was real um, at first. But it's fake. So I took a photo of that <laughs> just for my own amusement. Okay, so here are people. Uh, no awards or table settings. That's absolutely correct. And yeah, I'm not turning down food either, dude. So this is something I like to do um, kind of before the ceremony is uh, kind of hang out at the front and I'll just kind of capture some candidates of people sitting down. Um, something I try to do at every wedding. It's just, uh, you know, it's just a kind of a good way to get photos of more people. Uh, there's their officiant. He was a former police chief or something i don't remember a uh, cool videographer but as you can see in this photo like his camera for the ceremony his camera's gotten the way a lot so i, I think like every like wide shot I, I captured i think one of his cameras was in was in the photo which was Annoying, but it is what it is, you know. Okay, uh, trying to get the hug. Yep, really crop in on those candid moments. Get that negative space cropped out. You know, uh, I'm not a fan of negative space unless it's done in a specific way to add creativity to the photo um so that i feel like that really makes or breaks your images is when you crop them appropriately that was something i actually learned pretty early on when i was uh working for a newspaper the, the orange county register um and my editor was really big on cropping images tight you know focusing in on the moments um and on the photos um, and you know, you shouldn't leave again, you shouldn't leave too much negative space in an image unless it's serving a specific purpose. So I'm very big on cropping tight. And I think that's part of the reason why I, um, like shooting with the 7200 so much. So here's where the, yeah, it's really starting to come down now. 
Um, people are starting to cover themselves up. <laughs> this point you can actually see on on his suit like he's they're getting soaked at this point did he just have a camera on the tripod in the middle of the aisle yep he sure did well it's kind of like on the it was in the middle of the aisle but it's kind of like towards the side of the aisle which doesn't really make it better but yeah it was kind of annoying like, he was a cool videographer. He was really nice and respectful. But um, that was kind of annoying. And that was, like, it, that was the worst thing, if you even want to call it the worst thing that he did all day. So I wasn't, I wasn't too upset, you know. Like, you got you to gotta realize, too, like, you know, the bride and groom or the couple have hired a videographer. And they've made the effort to hire a videographer so it's important to them that he's there so you gotta let them you know you gotta let them do their job as well um but at the same time if you know if they are doing anything that's gonna make your job a little bit more difficult um it's always worth it maybe just having a quick discussion either before or after or you know before the ceremony for sure before the ceremony Um, yeah, see, so you're right there. Just, he was getting in a lot of my shots. Um, and you know what? His camera is just going to be in this photo. I don't care enough to edit it out. If it was like a really strong moment, then yeah, I might edit it out. But again, going back to what I've said a million times already, not every single photo needs to be absolutely perfect. Um, you know, there are photos for sure that you'll want to spend a little bit of extra time on, but every single image does not need to be perfect. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people get hung up on. And I think that's why so many people spend so long editing is because they feel like that every single image just needs to be like just award worthy and it doesn't have to be. And that's okay. I still love you. Still love you. How are you doing in the comments? Did he just have a camera on the tripod? Oh, you already, already said that. You already, already asked that question. Looks like it looked like a new question came in. Uh, cute flower girl. Want to get my, plenty of photos of her doing her thing. Uh, what is this? The handoff? Yeah. Oh yeah, I tried to get it, but I couldn't get it. Um, so shooting wide a little bit. That wasn't really that good of a photo, so we're not going to include that. Oh, and then my lens start or my lens filter started fogging up, so I had to quickly unscrew it. So that's why it's really foggy right here, because some moisture got underneath the uh, the filter. Uh, yeah, people just not stoked on the rain. <laughs> so I was trying to get, you know, reactions of people. Uh, here she comes, bride. There was a woman at this wedding, and I, I haven't seen her in any photos yet who was basically the uncle bob version but a female carrying around as she was carrying around a z72 and a 24 to 70 and she on a couple of occasions was trying to uh tell me how to do my job and um it was really annoying and i brought it up to i brought it up to the bride like when, after the ceremony I was like, hey, um, so just out of curiosity, who's this woman in the maroon dress, whatever color dress she was wearing? And she's like, oh, she's like a friend of my mom's. And I'm like, oh, OK, so she's not like an aunt or anything. And she's like, no. I'm like, she's like, why? I'm like, well, because she's kind of like she's kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. And if I politely like ask her to like stop 
doing what she's doing. I want to make sure I'm not offending, like, you know, someone important in the family. And she's like, oh, no, you can tell her whatever you want. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> Luckily, it didn't, it didn't really get to that point because I think uh, she got the hint after a while that she was really annoying the crap out of me. Um, so I didn't get to that point, but it, it got very close where I was about to say, hey, like, you're kind of making my life a little difficult. <laughs> Does she not know who you were? I mean, you're Sean F. and Lara. <laughs> um, no, she didn't, you know. Believe it or not, not everyone knows who I am. I know, it's hard for me to it's hard for me to make the revelation, too. I keep looking at this damn camera thinking it's on, but it's not. <laughs> um, let me tell you, I know so many weddings that would have been moved to an inside wedding so fast with the first sight of rain. Yeah, man, people in Colorado are nuts. Like, people here love the outdoors like they really do um they really love the outdoors here man and i have shot weddings literally in blizzards in rain um in wind all sorts of conditions um and this one you can't really tell how hard it's raining here because i'm shooting natural light but there are a couple photos coming up where i shot it with flash actually during the the, the ceremony um, where you will be able to, um, actually kind of get an idea of how hard it was raining. Um, these aren't great photos, but because the angle is bad, but, um, again, single shooter. So it's hard to get every angle, but, um, but yeah. So we are more than halfway through, guys. We are more than halfway through. And it's not, it's, we're only about an hour and 15 minutes into editing. So when I said I know how to edit weddings quickly, I wasn't BSing you. I was not lying. Okay, so I, shot a lot of these wide more than I normally would at a ceremony just because I was really trying to pick up like see if I could pick up some of the rain um and I really couldn't but I did get a lot of the um uh, you know like the cloudy moody skies in there so um I was able to kind of get some cool dramatic stuff here uh, I was trying to do like a little backlit thing see if I could pick up some of the raindrops uh, I couldn't, but it's still kind of a neat shot. And again, um, we're seeing a one-to-one -one preview here, so all this looks kind of pixelated and all that. That's just because it's just a super low-resolution version. Um, and it and while it may not look amazing right now, when I export it, um, it'll it'll be fine. And that's just again because I am looking. I, I want I want them to you know load. Um, really fast into um and it, i want my lightroom to load fast so i'm not having to like waste all this time kind of going in between photos okay that looks terrible this stupid videographer man i mean he was cool but during the ceremony like it's just be he's getting on my nerves a little bit um okay i might go back and edit that later um i don't want to spend too much time editing it right now that's kind of what, that's what it looks like. We're natural lit, naturally lit. This looking night of the twisters. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is. I heard they're announcing a sequel to that movie. By the way, Twister. I don't know if it's actually happening, but it's what I heard. I actually saw that movie in theaters. Uh, believe it or not, I, I was young though. Cause I think that movie came out in like 90, I don't know, 95. I think it was actually one of the first movies I ever saw. In movie it, it, I saw it in the theaters, like, yeah. Make sure those crops are nice and straight. So ceremony coverage is kind of boring. Uh, as far as the photography aspect is concerned, not a lot going on. I generally will shoot natural light just because um, 
you know, you want to be as unobtrusive as possible. And that means, you know, not using as much flash. Um, in some cases, as you saw earlier, I will use flash, um, kind of tr to try to get some more dramatic images, but, um, you know, you, you gotta use it when it's appropriate. Funny face, silly face, so I'm throwing it in. Okay, there we go. If you guys are, so for those of you who have, um, who have been with me since the beginning, uh, throw a comment in, um, throw a comment in, or in, in the chat. And uh, regardless of whether you've been here since the beginning or not, if you're drinking something fun, like I am, uh, let me know what you're drinking. I am drinking sake right now. I actually really like sake. So here's some more of those shots. Um, you know, with the, uh, you know, shooting the flash and you can actually kind of see right here where my flash is. So I'm actually gonna, I like this photo though, but I'm gonna crop it a little bit tighter. Hot chocolate and fireball. Is that, is that good? Is that good? That doesn't sound like it'd be good. That doesn't sound very good. Like hot chocolate, and like Bailey's or maybe like mint, like a mint something would be good but i mean if i'm wrong and i need to try this i will absolutely try it uh why did i take a photo of their butts oh yeah because they're getting drenched like that's a great that's a great stuff like this is is perfect to throw into galleries because it 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 lends to the story right like they are just getting soaked here guys like th it is not it's not sprinkling it is full on raining uh my z9 my z62 were getting drenched but they're all they're weather sealed you know so that doesn't bother me you know i'm not using a kit lens and a cheap camera from best buy like i'm you know i'm using you know stuff every professional should use this guy was funny dude he did gave he just did not care he was just sitting like <laughs> getting drenched I just finished a blackberry limeade from Sonic mixed with Costa Rican Guaro. That's their national liquor. Ooh. Overpriced younglings. Uh, no, it's like cinnamon with chocolate. It's so yummy. Bailey's is too sweet. Maybe it's a Canadian thing. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Speaking of Canadians, Claudia, um, now that they've opened up the border, uh, you got to try to come to Wedding Photography Boot Camp, man. I would love to see you there. Um, I would love to see you sign up. Because you're, you're pretty cool to hang out with. You're pretty cool to hang out with. And I'd like to see you in Colorado. Okay. Uh, reading the vows. Hey Ellie, what's up? So we're just editing the ceremony right now. We are more than halfway through the wedding and we've only been editing now for about an hour and a half. And we are more than halfway through a 3,800 wedding, 3,800 image wedding, excuse me. Okay, going through vows. Perfect. She's all like, yeah, I love you. I'm glad we're getting married. And he's like, yeah, me too. That's what people, that's what people do, right? If I didn't have a wedding that sat, I would for sure come to the workshop. Will you have any future dates? Um, potentially, Potent I mean, yeah, I will. I just don't, uh, at, at the moment I'm only doing, um, one boot camp a year. Um, if there's enough interest, you know, I might do, I might do more than one. I do more than one, but I, um, 
don't have any plans on doing more than one. So um, I highly recommend if you are interested, this goes to everyone, if you are interested in um, attending this year's boot camp, um, that you sign up like the second it goes on sale. That opens up for you know registration, which is um, November 25th, Black Friday, um, at 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Because it, it will sell out. Um, it's sold out every year. And it's fun. Just ask Gretchen or Colby. Just ask Gretchen or Colby who are in the chat right now. We get we do extracurricular activities as well um, during the boot camp, which they can attest to the funness of that. Do I like that? Uh, 14 to 30? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I do, um, I do wish it was a two eight, but you know, generally when I'm shooting wide, I'm not really shooting at a wide aperture anyway. I'm always generally shooting pretty narrow. Um, so it doesn't really bother me that much. The only time it does bother me is when I need to shoot wide, when I'm shooting natural light and I'm shooting wide, um, that is or when it's dark, I should say, when it's when it's natural light and I need to shoot wide, um, then it can be annoying. Um, but for the most part, I, I don't mind. It, it focuses pretty quickly. Uh, it's it's reasonably sharp. It's not like tack tack sharp, but it's reasonably sharp. Um, and it weighs nothing. Like it weighs absolutely nothing. It's a perfect travel lens too. First kiss. You know what? Let's actually throw. Um, Let's throw a first kiss in black and white as well. There we go. Do it. Oh dear, all the fun things. Yes, all the fun things did happen at Wedding Photography Boot Camp this past year. It was uh, it was very fun. Great moment right here. Freaking love, except for this dude. So <laughs> I'm going to try to crop in a little tighter here. Um, but that's a good moment right there because it's a genuine moment, right? And we're going to throw that one black and white as well. Um, love that right there. Actually, I, what, so one thing I do um, is when I'm going through photos and there's some photos that I might consider wanting to submit for competition, I'll actually mark them with three stars. That way I know like, hey, this is one that um, I think would potentially do well either in A, my portfolio, or B, uh, for competition. And that's a really good moment right there because it's genuine. Uh, not a good facial expression on her, but uh, his is really good. So we're gonna, we're gonna throw that in. Yes. He's like, yeah, we got married. Oh, uh, he was making jokes like all day. He's like, yeah, now we got to consummate the shit out of this marriage. <laughs> well, especially after he saw that Boudoir album that she uh, gifted to him. He was just, he was so stoked on that album, which I don't blame him. Like I would be too, if, you know, I got a Boudoir album as a gift. Um... Walking down the aisle, walking down the aisle. I almost always shoot this tight. Actually, I always shoot it tight. Um, I just like shooting tight in general. I like the compression. I like, um, I just like the feel that it gives. Her, her bouquet is way too freaking big though. And she's holding it up too high. Uh, that's one thing like I, I try to like, recommend to people that they avoid is getting bouquets that are way too big like look at her like look at that. she's holding it right in front of her face um so i did throw this one as a teaser so we're gonna go ahead and just bring this creative virtual copy and just bring it back to color she's like what did i just do <laughs> Got married, yo. 
Weddings are fun, man. Like I know, like to us, like it's just, it's just work. Um, but weddings are a lot of fun. Um, one day I hope to be invited to a wedding, like as a guest, and not as a photographer. We'll see. Well, I have I've been invited to a couple, but like, not um, doesn't happen very often. It's happened like one and a half times. And I say one and a half because I was a groomsman at one wedding. Um, but they actually, they only hired their photographer for eight hours of coverage and they needed like an extra hour on the, the front end of the wedding to do prep photos. So they actually had me as a groomsman do prep photos, <laughs> uh, which was funny. I, I, I was happy to do it, but I was just like, can I just like drink all day and not have to worry about like working at all? <laughs> I think I just brought like uh at the time I was shooting on a D750 and I think I just brought like a D750 and an 85. This is years ago. Question is, would you leave the camera at home? Like we need to clarify, like if I was a guest at a wedding, would I leave the camera at home? Is that what you're asking? Um, cause if that is what you're asking, that is a very, very, very easy. Yes. Like, dude, I love my job. Don't get me wrong. But when I shoot 50 plus weddings a year, the last thing I want to do is take more photos. Like, you know, I want to actually enjoy my life sometimes and not. I love photography. It's the biggest part of my life, but I don't want every, like, I don't want to consume my life to the point where it's unhealthy. Does that make sense? Like you have to have, you have to have a nice work life balance, even when you, even with something that you love. Colby, uh, saying about the workshop, we had a blast just waiting until karaoke night. I thought I sent this earlier when he asked us to tell us about the boot camp. Uh, yeah, so that was an imp so uh, on day two, um, so during the workshop, basically, we have there's three days, right? We have two days of, of actually hands on shooting where we I teach creative lighting and, and how to, um, you know, get creative with your light and, and all that. And then the third day is a business where we just kind of sit in our ass all day and we talk about the business of photography, how to get clients, how to run your studio, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so on at the end of day two, we had just gotten done, you know, with the reception lighting portion. And we're like, and like half of everyone was like, let's go do something fun. And then Christina, who's the Estes Park local, was like, let's go do karaoke. Uh, they do karaoke on Saturday nights. And we're like, yeah. So uh, we did karaoke and we were up till probably... Colby, how late were we up that night? I want we. I feel like we were up to like three a.m. Um, with class starting the next morning at eight. <laughs> oh my gosh! Or no, I think we started a little later actually that day. I think it was like nine. Um, but it was so worth it. We had so much fun. Oh, great moment! Great, great, great moment. I didn't even realize I I, I didn't even realize I captured her reaction there. Because, you know, sometimes you're shooting stuff so fast, you don't even realize you get it until after the fact. Yeah, we were up late, Gretchen. I don't remember how late, but it was it was a late night. Uh, but it was so worth it. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Learned a lot. Okay, so now we're, we're doing... The ceremony's over. We're doing family photos. Uh, obviously, little ones, it's really hard to get their attention. Uh her freaking bouquet again causing uh, casting a little bit of a shadow on his face i didn't i didn't notice that actually until i brought the photos into lightroom um when i was doing their teasers i saw i'm like god damn it not a big deal though i'm not gonna stress over it definitely 3 a.m because then we started playing games yeah we, yeah that's right because we came home from the karaoke place pretty late and then we kept drinking and um playing music and at one point one of 
the students was on the table with a banana in his mouth or something. I don't remember what happened. Um, it was, uh, it was a hoot. Um, but if you've, if you've met me, um, I don't like to take life too seriously. I like to have fun, even when you're, when you're working and when you're learning things. Um, so if you can make an education opportunity fun, like that's oh, a lot of focus. Um, why not dude? Like, why not? Oh, this was the woman. Yeah, this is the woman who was telling me how to do my job. Oh, that's great. I hope she doesn't watch this after the fact. If you do watch this, uh, I'm just giving you a hard time. You're actually really nice. <laughs> You're really nice. I'm just giving you a hard time. But you were trying to tell me how to do my job a couple times. <laughs> I know you only have the best intentions. Okay. Um, bustling the dress every day. I'm bustling, bustling. Am I done yet? Nope, not done yet, Matt. But we're getting there. But we are about two thirds done. And we are only about an hour and 45 minutes into editing. So as you can see, I am efficient at this. Uh, so yeah, she's completely under her dress. Did I, what's, oh yep, got some photos of her doing that. Oh, that was a cute moment. Okay, so actually uh, on this wedding, um, I, I actually, as I'm going through it, I, I've used a little bit less off camera flash than I normally would. Um, and again, that's not because I was lazy or anything. You know, you just, you don't always need to use off camera flash. You don't like, you know, if the good light is good light, whether it's natural or whether it's, you know, something that you're making. Um, so why, why, do more work for yourself when you don't need to. Did you, I missed it. You said this would be recorded. Yes. So this is being recorded. Um, you'll be able to catch this after the fact um, in this group. I'm also going to post it on YouTube as well. So the most, the most important part of the video is, is the first 20 minutes. Um, but I'm, I am going through this entire wedding from start to finish as well. So you can uh, just see exactly how I edit every single part of the day. And at the very end of this wedding, the last photos, um, I also did a couple cigar uh, cigar shots with the groomsmen. Um, if you were at my wedding photography boot camp, uh, you, you'll we we did those actually both both uh, both this year and last year we did them. What is she? Oh, is she eating a pretzel? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to include that. Okay, actually I do. <laughs> like I like I said, this bride um was super expressive, and was just like, just making like really funny like faces all day. <laughs> and just being a goober which is like which is my people you know like i'm a goober by nature as well um and i love just being ridiculous and doing ridiculous things um so i think that's part of the reason why i vibed so well with these um this couple or these clients is just because like we're just we're just being goofy and having fun and i think that's so important with like any sort of business like in the service industry is you know you're not just selling like you know your photography you're selling an experience and your 
you have the privilege of being a part of such an important day in a couple's life and you really have to add as much as you can to it and to that experience aside from just the photographer like i don't like if you're the world's best photographer like technically but you're just kind of a drag and kind of boring to be around like i don't want you shooting my wedding dude like i want you to i want you to to be like fun and entertaining and goofy and you know on on point and on par with what my ideals and what my values are um and even like I said earlier, you know, I've shot 600 weddings at this point in my career. And I still, you know, even on days like where I'm having crappy, you know, crappy days in my personal life, I'm always trying to give my 100% and show up, you know, being the best version of myself I can be. I know it sounds cheesy, but it's true. Like, dude, I've, I've been to a couple weddings before. I won't go into detail right now, but I've been to a couple weddings where I've had some really messed up stuff going on in my personal life um and you just kind of have to um put that aside and give it your all and you know remember like yeah to us it's it's the job it's just a job but to them like you know it's the one of the biggest parts of their life um and you need to respect that privilege um really important all right there's philosopher sean for the day um giving you my unsolicited advice <laughs> uh i don't remember why i took photos of these but it was kind of an important thing i don't really remember why but that's why i took photos of it here we go after this Matching tattoos. I think that's what we're showing off. Yeah, we're showing off matching tattoos. Who would get a tattoo, man? Tattoos are so dumb. It was a joke. Kidding. I don't have any tattoos. Uh, okay. Just a quick room shot. Nothing fancy, nothing special. Oh, them interacting with the pretzel bar. As you can see, it got pretty much just demolished. So that pretzel bar is epic. All right, grand entrances. I hate grand entrances, but it is what it is. Um, I got another one in Mexico. Woo! What'd you get? What'd you get? Also, getting a tattoo in Mexico sounds like the start of, like, a comedy. <laughs> Have a good night, Ellie. Thanks for uh, tuning in. So I, so I like do almost no editing on grand entrances unless it's like a really powerful moment. I, I kind of, I kind of like, they're fun, like for like the bride and groom or the couple to look back on, but I don't, I don't know. I think photographers like just through my experience, take the grand entrances like way too seriously. And what I mean by that is I think, I feel like they like overthink it too much about lighting and everything. Like as long as it's lit decent, like, just shoot it, you know? Doesn't need to be super creative. My Mayan sign, hard to explain. I'll send a pic, okay. So you've been sticking with 7,200 and 1430 most all the day. Yeah, so you did miss the first 90 minutes. Um, I literally shot this entire wedding with nothing but two lenses, the 7,200 and the 14 to 30. I shot um, about two thirds of the wedding on the 7,200 and the other third on uh the 14 to 30 i didn't for some reason i didn't use my macro lens at all i usually use my macro lens for like um the ring shots but i didn't at this wedding um and then so, and then i'll usually shoot like the 85 for prep shots and i i don't remember 
I don't remember why I didn't use the 85, because I usually do. Um, I don't remember why I didn't use it this day. Maybe I just, I must have in the moment felt like it wasn't necessary. Oh, that's right. She was trying to do this, like, rolling thing over him. And I think the first time she failed. Yeah, the first time she failed, but then the second time when she was out of my light, um, she was able to pull it off. But I don't think I got a good photo of it. I kind, yeah, I kind of did. All right, here are the bride and groom coming in for their entrance. Uh, yeah, let's crop this a little tighter. I'll pay a little bit more attention to these photos um, since it is, of course, the bride and groom. Okay, we're getting close, guys. We're now in the reception. So they went straight in, I think they went straight into their first dance. So you get to see how I kind of light a reception now. Um, if I remember correctly, they went straight into their first dance. Yes, they did. Okay, so um, this is just me. I'll generally shoot uh, first dances uh, wide and tight, but I'll start shooting it wide just to kind of get some establishing shots so i like to shoot nice and wide like this um just to kind of show off the room a little bit and again they had this really cool like chandelier which you know just is a really prominent feature of the room do you worry about the distortion of people on the end of group shots with the 14 to 30. um yeah sometimes and that is that is a real concern that you kind of have to watch out for um, however, when I do shoot with the 14 to 30, I do try to back up as much as possible uh, to eliminate that distortion. Um, and I also try to keep people away from the edges of the frame as much as possible as well. Um, but I always try to make an effort to shoot all my portraits, my traditional portraits, with the 70 to 200. Um, and if I really do have to use the 14 to 30, like I have to if I have to shoot a group portrait at 14 millimeters, it's going to be a pretty damn big portrait. And um, at that point, like my, I'm just more concerned about getting, fitting everyone in the photo itself as opposed to distortion. Um, Cause that's a little bit ridiculous. Like if I need to shoot with a 14, if I need to shoot 14 millimeters, that's a big ass group portrait. It's a little ridiculous, a little bit overkill. So Have a good night, Cameron. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Appreciate you. All right, we are getting very close to the end here, guys. Um, we're just shooting, we're getting this first dance out of the way. So same exact thing, same lighting setup for her parent dances. So this is her dancing with her stepdad, I believe. Her real dad. One of the two. I guess this is her one of the two. It's either her stepdad or her real dad, I don't remember. I want to say it's her real dad actually. Yeah, it is a real dad, because yeah, he taught yeah. Okay. What focus are you utilizing with the ZX2 on the entrance shots? Um, so actually, I shot the entrance shots um, with the uh, Z9, um, and I use uh, AFC. Uh, great photo, um, AFC. But uh, I use so autofocus continuous for those who are not Nikon users, um, and I use like the 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 small like box setting. So, uh, and I also have it set to track eyes. So it's, it's set to track their eyes, which is, I found to be the most accurate.
um, for Z62 and the Z72, I use the uh, dynamic autofocus setting. Um, that's what I use on those cameras. Oops, wrong slider. And I think she's going to dance. Did she dance with stepdad? Yeah, she did. There's stepdad. Um, they weren't in the middle of the... Oh, yeah, they were doing this, like, kind of goofy dance around the room thing. So it was actually kind of hard to light them because they kept stepping out of my light. When I, this is something I'll te I teach in my workshops, but when I shoot um, dances, like the first dances, um, I use a lot of mag grids to really focus my beam of light in a specific area. It just helps me get a little more creative. And these guys kept moving out of my light, as you can see. So like right here, they're completely out of my light, which was, you know, obviously, you know, not their fault. Um, it was just really frustrating for me as far as um, how I wanted to light them. So again, they're just barely out of my light here. So a lot of the light on their face is actually just kind of bouncing off of like the um, the floor. The floor is really shiny. Um, yeah, that was a quick dance right there. Okay, so groom now dancing with mama. You should yell at them. No, I shouldn't. Uh, Claudia, I am shocked at how little editing you're doing. I think I do way too much to every single photo. And again, like, you know, if it's a really important photo, like, then I'll spend a little bit more time on it. But my goal, you know, when I tell people like, oh, like, you know, I, I, sh I pretty much, these photos are like straight off the camera. Like I'm proving to you guys right here. Like I'm not bullshitting you. Like I shoot, I, I, my photos are pretty much pretty damn perfect straight off the camera and also implying those import presets really help a lot. Um, they really help cut down my editing time immensely. Okay. She was ugly crying, so we don't want to throw too many of those in, but obviously we need to throw in a few. Yeah, and I think that's why, you know, if you guys, you know, for those of you who missed the beginning of the video, um, make sure you go back to to it later. But, um, you know, make sure that you, you're using those, those four t tips that I told you about, because if you do those four things, it's going to dramatically speed up your editing time. And um, getting, again, getting those photos is perfect off the camera is going to really help. And also, you know, having the understanding that you don't need to spend a mil, you know, a ton of time on each image. You, you don't, there's no point. You're just going to drive yourself nuts. Um, you, you really are. Like, the, as you guys can see, like the main adjustments I am making are minor um, exposure adjustments and then cropping. Those are the big ones that I'm doing. Like that was a little too hot, so I gotta tone that down a little bit. Um, okay. Um, what's going on here? Oh, dinner time. Nothing exciting there. Okay, okay, sunset photos. Here's the exciting stuff, guys. For those of you uh, who are who stuck around. Here's the fun stuff. Here's the fun stuff. So I, I wanted to shoot the sunset like all day um, as much as I could. So I started out with them here behind the gazebo and I just landed on only this photo, right? Um, as far as uh, the set. So all I did here was I, I there's a couple light stand legs popping out, which I edited. Um, and then I just put one light behind them as a silhouette. Um, this is when I started doing some more of the uh, the fun stuff. Um, so this was kind of the, the great one out of, I, I already edited a lot of these because um, these were, um, 
uh, these are so good. I wanted to include a lot of these in my teasers. So this one I actually won an award for um, in the last uh, WPGA competition, um, which I'm stoked on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sync those settings just because I know I want to make them look consistent. Maybe a little bit less shadow and a little bit less. We're going to go ahead and crop that tighter. Yeah, this uh, epic sunset. It gets better too. Like just just wait till you see the rest of the set. Uh, no. So I was using a bare bulb here, um, with a uh CTB gel. Stands for color temperature blue. Um, same photo. Uh, just shot wide. Yep, shot wide. We're gonna bring up the exposure a little bit. Bring up the shadows a little bit. That house kind of got in the way, and that's why I quickly noticed that. I'm like, yeah, we're only gonna we're gonna stop shooting. But then I looked the other way, and I was like, holy crap, that sunset is pretty amazing. So uh, I wasn't getting a strong enough highlight. So as you can see right here, I wasn't getting a strong enough highlight um, just from the sunset alone to really silhouette him. So that's when I put um, this rim light behind him and that's where i kind of started to get a little bit of the separation between them and the highlight and i was like okay so i need to do this and then i'm like so i shot that and then i i thought uh okay let's add in a front light as well um because i think i want to illuminate them and i had to shoot it a couple times because i was catching that backlight um uh, that one didn't fire uh but then here i got it Right, and then I just edited out that light stand, um, and this was the result. So it's it's it looks blurry, but again, that's just because it's a preview image. But um, I also want an award for this image as well. Um, then I just shot a, a couple of just standard naturally lit images. Um, again, these look like they're out of focus, but they're not. Um, it's just because I have one-to-one -one preview. I have, I have the one-to-one -one previews on, and then I also have um, the uh, the resolution down on the images as well, so they load faster. Um, so some of them look like they might be out of focus or soft, but they're not. They're tack sharp. And it depends on what screen you're looking at too. Um, like. On my my main on my main monitor, they actually look uh, soft. But then on my uh, my live stream monitor over here, they actually look pretty sharp. So maybe for you guys, they're actually looking sharp. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I wanted to take more photos of them, but the videographer needed to get his shots too, so I couldn't I couldn't steal them for that long. Um, and then one more photo that I did with them going back to here. Um, that was, uh, it, look, yeah, it looks blurry, but it's not. There we go. So, yep. Uh, that was just a super quick candid. Okay. And, and honestly, that's kind of the, um, that's kind of the, the gist of it. Um, for the rest of the reception, I'm not going to, uh, since it's getting late, I'm not going to um, probably go through and edit all these um, since it's kind of just boring stuff. And to me, it's really boring, but I'm just going to kind of scroll through really quickly so you can see what I'm getting. I'm getting, uh, you know, like speeches, cake cutting, um, some open dancing. And what I am going to skip to, though, is... Um, the uh, cigar shot. So I set up a, I set up a couple lights and I'm just testing uh, my lights here. Um, so when the groom comes out, you know, he can, um, you know, we can be ready to rock and roll. So I think I got, here he is right here. So I'm shooting a bunch of photos. I have uh, a backlight with, um, you know, a, a teal mag gel on it and then a front light uh, or side light, I should say. 
you know, to get him, uh, to illuminate him. I think there was one specifically I marked that I really liked. Uh, yep, this one right here. So I'm shooting a lot of photos just to get the, you know, get the smoke. And then I did a couple as well with all his groomsmen, or not all his groomsmen, but a couple of his groomsmen here. And that's it. Oh yeah, there it is. I converted it to uh, black and white. So I wanna make sure that I also include one in color as well. Whenever I do include a black and white image, I always try to include one in color. Uh, nope, no, nothing's bare bulb here. I'm using, uh, uh, I think a mag sphere with a mag grid as, uh, on the lights. So anyway, that's it. Um, I think there was a couple more at the end that I took photos of, but um, so I, I just skipped a, a few of the reception photos uh, just cause I don't, I'm gonna bore you guys to death honestly with those, but um, up until those uh, speech photos, I was at 3,000 and where am I? Where is it? There's a lot of speeches, so I don't want, like, yeah, I'm going to bore the shit out of you guys. So I was at 30, uh, about 3,100 photos uh, out of 30, so about 700 uh, reception photos, 700 reception photos. So that took me uh, about two hours to get to that point. It'll take me probably about another 30 minutes to edit the rest of those images. So we're looking at two and a half hours. So I just edited a 3,800 image wedding from start to finish in two and a half hours, which is freaking awesome. So for those of you who don't believe me or didn't believe me when I said, you know, um, I, I can edit it in this time, I just, I just proved it to you. So last thing, what I do, um, uh, when I'm, when I'm done, I got all those photos done, um, what I did is, uh, I, what I do is I go back to my library, I go to rating, okay? And then I will essentially select all of the images that I marked, right? Um, and again, I just skipped the reception photos, which is probably gonna add about another 100 images. Um, yeah, about another 100 images. So roughly, Roughly uh, 700, so roughly 800 photos is what we're gonna end up with. So it, again, it took me two and a half hours to, to deliver 800 images, which is awesome. Um, that's how I'm able to edit a wedding so quickly. So for those of you who uh, didn't get to get a chance to watch the beginning of the video really quickly, um, just to recap the steps, um, First, you wanna get the picture as perfect off the camera as you can, okay? The less time that you are editing your photos, right, the more time you have to do fun stuff. So the better you can get off the camera, the less time you're gonna spend behind your computer. Um, then you wanna optimize Lightroom. So there's a couple of things that you can do to allow your Lightroom catalog to speed up. So um, again, go back to the beginning of this video so you can see exactly what I did. Um, third, import presets. So applying a global global edits to every single one of your images. So you're spending less time making minor adjustments to each image. And then finally, as you guys just saw, I call and edit simultaneously. So I am not spending, um, you know, extra time calling the images and then going back and editing them. So um, again, this video will be made available after the fact for those of you who are tuning in a little bit late, but I wanna thank you so much, or I should say Liam Neeson, my pup, and I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry, the, the camera, the good camera uh, stopped working halfway through, but uh, if you guys uh, are on the fence about Wedding Photography Bootcamp, I highly recommend that you go ahead and sign up on November 25th. It is gonna be so much fun. We're gonna learn a ton of stuff and I wanna help you and your business grow. Thank you guys, and uh, until the next live video, see you then.